Hi everyone. Welcome to the Conga for Nonprofits webinar. In this session, we'll be introducing you to some of the capabilities of the Conga suite that are ideally suited to the needs of the nonprofit community. In this session, we'll be focusing on two key features for nonprofits within Conga Composer: Conga Mail Merge and Conga Quick Merge. Conga Mail Merge, which is included when you install Conga Composer, supports the needs of nonprofits by letting you easily create mass mailings from Salesforce. Conga Quick Merge is a free add-on that takes this capability one step further, allowing you to shortcut your mail merge processes. Today, I'll be starting with an announcement. For years, we've been known as the Conga Guys, so we've decided to make it official. Our company is now known as Conga. It's the same company and the same service. We're just known by the name that our customers prefer. My name is Ashley Green, and I'm the Director of Education and Communities here at Conga, and I'll be your moderator for this session. Before we get started, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. The entire webinar is slated to last about 60 minutes, including about 15 minutes for Q&A at the end. We'll also be taking a break at the end of each section to answer questions. We have a lot of registrants, so everyone's phones will be on mute. If you do have questions, please submit them online. Obviously, we won't get to all of your questions, but we'll answer as many as we can during the session. And any that we don't get to will be answered in an FAQ that we'll post to our knowledge base. The webinar is being recorded, and we'll also make that recording available within a few days on our YouTube channel and in our knowledge base as well. So let's get started. I'm pleased to introduce Robert Boyd, who will be taking you through this session. Robert's one of our business analysts here at Conga, and he's looking forward to taking you through this session. Robert, it's all yours. Hi, everyone. Um, as Ashley mentioned, my name is Robert Boyd. I'm a business analyst here at Conga. And uh, thanks, everyone, for making the time. Um, today, we're going to go through the best ways to leverage Conga Composer for nonprofit organizations. And a lot of what that revolves around is actually Conga Mail Merge, which is a piece of the Conga Composer package. It's included, it's just the piece of the tool that I find most helpful for not-for-profit organizations. So the two things that we're going to focus on today um, is creating mass mailings with Conga Mail Merge. The example we're going to go through are donation receipts, um, which we've seen to be a very common requirement amongst nonprofits, and I hope that hits home for many of you. The next example we're going to run through is doing the same mass mailing process, but with a free add-on product we offer called Conga Quick Merge. So let's jump right in. And I'm going to quickly go over to Salesforce, where I have a not-for-profit demo environment set up right here. So this is all sample data. And uh, my colleague Shelly, who hosted the webinar earlier today, has um, created this demo environment with the context of a Boston Terrier Rescue Foundation. So that's what all of the data will look like. And in here, we're going to immediately go into Conga Mail Merge. This is a tab that you would find in your Salesforce environment after you install Composer. And clicking this right here will just launch the seven-step wizard that is Conga Mail Merge. So as we walk through this, I'll break down each step in detail. Um, but what we're going to do with this example is generate letters, labels, and envelopes all in the same batch process. So if we select all three right here, we'll press Next and progress to step two. In the second step here is where we actually select what our data source is. Um, you could do this on the fly. As you can see, there's a couple different sources up at the top, contacts, leads, accounts, some standard objects that we anticipate you might be using. And you could further filter for each. So you could show all contacts, and you could filter the list for um, maybe the mailing state. You just do a certain state at a time, something like that. However, the approach that I recommend, and probably the most powerful approach for getting your data in order for Conga Mail Merge, is to use a Salesforce report. So this reports radio button over here will show us a list of all the reports that have been stored in a particular folder, this Conga Reports folder. And we only have one, just for the purpose of a demo here. But let's take a look at this report and really break down how we're getting this information and how it's going to allow us to create these mass mailings. So the very first thing um, about this report is the only filter we have is that the, um, the donation has been posted. You can see there's a couple different types of donations we see here. There's donations, there's memberships, there's one major gift. But the two objects involved on this report are opportunities and the account. 
So this is an example of a master detail report that we're going to run through Conga Mail Merge. And what that means is that we are connecting two objects, and there might be many child objects, many detail, or I'm sorry, not objects, but records. There might be many child records for every master record in this list. Our master object in this case is the account. So that's what this field over here represents, our master object. When you create a report for Conga Mail Merge, it's very important to include your master object ID. And best practice is to park that master object ID on the far right side of this report. That's sort of how you'll read it. It seems a little uh, funky, but you actually would read it right to left to see this is your master object. So we're looking at a list of accounts. But then for each of those accounts, they might have multiple donations that they've posted. So the majority of these are just one-to-one. -one. These folks, for example, this account, the David Miller family, only had one donation. But down here, the Vivian Lee family, we can see it's the exact same account, exact same account ID here. But there are two different uh, donations that were posted on different dates. So that's what we mean by master detail here, is connecting many accounts that might also have many opportunities related to them. So you could always play with the sort order of this report. Um, right now we're just sorting by the opportunity name alphabetically, but you could always do it by close date, for example, um, to get something more chronological. But right now this report is queued up and ready to go for a list of accounts with donations. If we jump back here, we're going to select that report and we're going to press next. So at this step, between steps two and three of this mail merge wizard, is when mail merge is actually reading that report and it's making sense of it so that it knows what to actually merge. We can see that the source has been identified as the account and there are seven master records. That means that seven accounts were found, but there were actually eight detail records, meaning that there were eight total opportunities, in this case donations, related to those seven accounts. So we could further filter the list. Um, I'm going to do all of them for the sake of example here. So one important thing to note, before we go ahead and merge this, we're going to take a look at the process of creating a template. Because this is exactly the step in this mail merge wizard where you would stop and you would actually populate one of your templates to merge. This little button down here that says view data, we're going to click that and what this does is it generates an Excel workbook called the view data workbook. And there's a couple elements of this workbook that I want to show you so that we could possibly add some fields to a template. I do have a working template right here, so I'll show you that briefly before we jump into that view data workbook. On this template, we have already a few merge fields in place. You can see we've sourced the account name, the billing street, the billing city, and then there's a table down here which will eventually display all of our related donations for each account. So if we look at this side by side with our view data workbook, the first thing I want to do is highlight how we got some of these merge fields that are already here in the template this account name merge field, we could find the exact same value over here. This field name that says account underscore name is exactly the same field that we've mapped over to this right here. So if that all makes sense, we're going to add a couple more fields. Um, up here we have kind of an incomplete address block. We just have the billing city. So why don't we go ahead and add the billing state and also the zip code. So if we go over here, we can find our field for the billing state right here. And what we'll do is simply copy that field name out of our view data workbook. That's been copied to my clipboard, and I'm coming over here back to our Word template. You can insert fields manually by going to Insert and then Quick Parts and choosing the Field option. But there is a very, very handy keyboard shortcut that I'd like to share with you guys. Um, on your keyboard, all you would do to do the same thing is press the Alt key and then the letters IF. So Alt IF brings up this little insert field menu. And then if we press the letter M twice on our keyboard, just like mail merge, it takes us to this correct type of field down here, the merge field. So all we have to do now that we've selected the right type of merge field is plug in our field name. That came from our view data workbook and it's just the account underscore billing state. We press OK, that's inserted right there. Looks very similar to the rest of the merge fields that we see in this document. We'll do another one. We'll go ahead and grab the, uh, the postal code as well. So that's right above it conveniently here. And we'll do the exact same thing where we copy that field name out of view data. We come over here and we use our keyboard shortcut to insert a merge field. And we paste that in. Excellent. 
Those are fairly easy fields to grasp because they're one to one. Every one of these accounts that we've run through in that report and generate a letter for will have a name and a billing state and a postal code. But what they might have is multiple opportunities, in this case donations, related to them. So that's what this table down here is going to do for us in our output file. This will show the number of opportunities related to each account. If it's one, it'll simply display one. But if there were 50, this table would grow and we would show all 50 opportunities. So here, we've already added a couple of merge fields. And over here in our view data workbook, instead of looking at this worksheet that was labeled the master, obviously referring to our master object, the account, we're going to go to this other worksheet called report data. And what this is showing us is the remaining fields that we had on that report that were not the account ID. So things like the opportunity name, the record type here, the stage, the amount, and the close date were all specific to the opportunity rather than the account. So we're only showing one row of sample data here because obviously we might have quite a lot if you have a big batch process. But looking at this different worksheet here in our template, we actually reference that worksheet. And that's what this little field right here colored in red is doing. It's called table start report data. And it's indicating the place in the document where we're going to merge fields that come from our detail records instead. So we've actually already added two of those fields, the record type, the close date. But why don't we go ahead and add the amount as well over here. So it's a very similar process. We've already added that table start merge field. So we've indicated that we're going to get fields from this report data worksheet instead. If we use that amount merge field and bring it over here into this right side of the table, we're going to use that same shortcut and insert that field right here. It's colored red, so I'm just going to simply make it black instead for formatting purposes. And then what we would need to do here, very logically, we had a table start, so we need to add a correspondent table end field in order to tell mail merge that we're done with this table. We are done merging fields from our detail records here. So I'll insert a field just like before, but this one actually isn't provided in our view data workbook. We'll type this one in by hand, but we're simply going to reference that same worksheet. I'll type in table end, all one word, and then the word report data. This one is case sensitive based on your worksheet there. So capital R, capital D, as we're plugging that in, and we press OK. I'll color that red so it stands out as not a normal merge field, but a placeholder, one of those detail region fields. And then the very last step in this template is you see that we have a, a place for the total, but we don't have anything in that cell right next to it. Conga Composer leverages a feature called Auto Sum that will give you a subtotal of a table. So if I insert another field here, this is one that's specific just for Conga Composer. It won't come out of our View Data Workbook. It won't come out of Salesforce, but it's one of our features. So if we type in the word Auto Sum, and then in parentheses the word above, that merge field right there will give us a dynamic subtotal of all of the opportunities that, uh, that were merged into that table once we run it. Obviously, it's going to sum up just the column right there. Auto sum above indicates that it's just going to total all those amount fields that come in. The last thing that you might play around with in this template is formatting fields differently. So right now, we can see that that amount, it's fairly well formatted. It has decimal points. It's 30.00. But we want to ensure that that looks like a currency value. So we're going to go into the, the field codes of this particular merge field here. If I right click on the amount merge field and hit toggle field codes, we can see the underlying components of this merge field. Um, the field name is right there, amount, but what we're going to change is everything after this little backslash. So the star and the word merge format we're going to fully delete right here. And instead, I'm going to add what we call a picture switch, which will format this like a currency value. This is another feature that's just specific to Composer. But what we do is put in a pound sign right there, space, and then the word currency with a capital C. That will add a dollar sign on the left side. It'll put a comma in between every third digit, and it will add decimal points as well. So once that's been done, we can right click and we can update that field. And it'll toggle those field codes shut again, and it looks just like the amount we saw before. Another feature about auto sum above is it automatically takes in the formatting of the above data, essentially. So if we formatted the amount to look like a currency value, the auto sum above will pick up on that same formatting and make it look just like a currency. So this is a fairly good looking template. And um, I already have this stored in Salesforce.com. 
So what we're going to do is close out of this and close out of our view data workbook as well. And with all this data selected back on step three where we were, we will simply press next. The next step is where we would actually select our template from. So we just worked on one for an example to add some merge fields to see how that works. But for the sake of time, we've actually uploaded that to Salesforce as well. This is stored in our Conga template manager, and we're able to access it right here. So if I go ahead and select that template, you could also view it as well, which can be handy just to make sure that you have the right one. We'll press next. In step five is where we pick what label template we'd like to use. So mail merge is good in the sense that it will provide a lot of commonly used label formats. So most of the Avery's in here um, are listed and then there's a couple custom ones. This does not prevent you from creating your own custom label templates if you have a very specific format or size that you need to use. But generally this helps people because these are the ones they're already using. So we'll select a very basic one, just the 5160, and we'll press next. So in this step we're selecting our envelope template. And you can include a particular return address here if you wanted to. Maybe I'll tweak that just a little bit just to make sure that we uh, aren't missing any data there. So we'll just say it's Denver, Colorado. We're going to include the account name and the recipient address. You can choose a particular envelope style, some of the more common ones here as well. But just like labels, you could create your own custom one as well if you had a very specific size or formatting you need to use. So now that we've selected our envelope template, um, very basic one just based on this size 10 style here. We'll press next. And we're actually going to get to the very end of this seven step wizard right now. So we're presented with a couple of options here on this last um, page. We have the opportunity to immediately download our letters, documents, labels, or envelopes, but just based on a different button click. You can also specify what file type you'd like, either Microsoft Word, the format where the template started off in, or a PDF output. We can convert that on the fly. You can also shoot for one file if it's possible. If it's too large, we'll have to zip it up. Or you can get multiple files where we would return you a zip folder with every letter distinctly merged inside that zip folder. For this one, we'll do one file and we'll do a Microsoft Word output. So if we click the letters documents button here, what we should expect to see is about seven or eight letters based on that report that we ran. If I open that up here on my computer, we're going to see merged values in every single one of these letters. So the address block came through very nicely. We included all those fields that we added, including the state and the zip code. We're addressing it to a particular account here. And throughout most of this static text here in this paragraph, we eventually land on our table where we display their donations. There's been only one donation for this particular account. But if we move down to the other ones, you can see we're addressing a completely different account here. It's a different donation for a different amount. Same thing is true down here for the Atkinson family. And then the one example I think we have here is the very last one where they have more than one donation. So you can see the Lee family here had two. So this table grew dynamically and uh, it knew that those donations were related to just this particular account. So the full master detail is really realized in this example right here. But these are all on different pages. They're essentially ready to be sent to a printer and um, mailed out. So if I close out of the output file here, we also have the opportunity to generate our labels and envelopes right here. So let's do the labels. And we've specified one Word file for this as well. So we see that an Avery 5160 sized label template has been populated with all these different address blocks for the various accounts that we ran. Pretty seamless, just the same seven that we saw, but this would be ready to be sent to a printer right off the bat, nice and formatted for the Avery 5160s. If we go back and do the same thing for the envelopes here, we'll click that button and we should expect to see similar number of envelopes as well. So right now this was just the, just the size 10 format that we used, but you can see we've got our return address that we customized. This one's for the David Miller family, this one's for Don Juan DeMarco, etc. all the way down the line for all those different accounts. So all the goods for sending out a mass mailing um, by snail mail here are available. We have our letters, we have our labels, we have our envelopes to stuff them in. The other feature that you can uh, leverage from this very last screen here in Mail Merge that I wanted to highlight 
is the ability to do some activity logging. So down here at, this, at the bottom of this screen, you can do this on the fly to log activities against those records uh, that you ran in your batch. In this case, we were looking at a list of accounts. So if we logged activities, it would create something in the activity history of the account records that we ran against. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to give it a custom subject here, and I'm just going to say letters, uh, we'll say donation letters generated. How about that? Great. We can choose to include the body of the letter um, in the actual task that gets logged there in activity history. I can be very helpful if you just wanted to go back and make sure that um, you know all your data made it in there or something like that. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll include that as well. And optionally, you could create a follow-up task. So right now, what we would do is leave a completed activity. But if you wanted to have them follow up in a few days, maybe make sure that the mailing went out or something like that, you could specify a day in the future uh, where that task needed to be attended to. We'll just leave the subject and we'll include the body of the letter for this example. But clicking the Log Activities button will make that happen gives you a little confirmation just to make sure that you're sure. And if we press OK, this little loading bar will tell us when it's done, and it'll actually tell us how many records it's logged against. So all seven records there, all of our account records, should now have activities against them. So we'll just take a look at, uh, at probably one or two of those just to make sure that that happened. But this particular account I know was included in the batch process. So if we go down here, we can see there it was. Just right now at 3.22 p.m., we log that task right there and here it is in the activity history the donation letters were generated it's related to this account um, it happened at a particular time by a particular person if we go into the activity like we discussed the body of the uh, actual message is right here in the comments of that task pretty good for auditing purposes um, most of the content makes it over you can tell that we haven't gotten our table just as nicely as we've liked but all of the information all of the data is present there Excellent. If we just look at any one of those other accounts, we'll see something very similar. This conga line account over here will probably have a very, very similar looking task logged against it. Donation letters generated. And just to double check it, here's a very distinct set of comments here for the conga line instead. So that's the basics of the mail merge routine that we wanted to go through today. But at this point, I'd like to pause for a few questions um, because we went through quite a lot there in the last 20 minutes. So I'd love to answer some, uh, some questions about what we just accomplished. Okay, we do have a number of questions, Robert. The first one, it says that we commented that quick merge was free. Is mail merge free as well? Mail merge is not free because it's part of the Conga Composer application. So Conga Composer, available from the App Exchange, is paid and it's based on licensed users. But once you have a subscription to Composer, you have mail merge, and then you could optionally add quick merge on top of that for free. Okay. Uh, let's see. The next question was, is it possible to use more than one report as input into mail merge? Unfortunately not. Um, Conga mail merge just relies on one particular report. Um, it's geared to do simpler batch processes. So if you were looking at including multiple data sets, you would probably want to look at another product of ours that can do a little bit more heavy lifting when it comes to batching. Okay. Um, there's a question, uh, there's a Mac user, and it's a question that I've heard before, mm -hmm. and they wanted to know, can you use the same keystrokes to input a merge field on a Mac? Oh, great question. And unfortunately, the answer is no. Um, I think we may have to blame Microsoft for that particular one, but that keyboard shortcut is available uh, for Microsoft Word for Windows. But in Microsoft Word for Mac, there are other shortcuts you can do, um, but they're not the exact same shortcut that I highlighted in this demo today. And just to piggyback on that, we do have a video on our YouTube channel that talks about uh, adding merge fields on a Mac as well. Um, there was another question, and uh, this one says that uh, if you want to generate mailing labels mm -hmm. using the one-by-one -one account model and include account names only for non-one-by-one -one orgs, can you do that? I believe so. It'd be something we'd probably have to look at on a case-by-case -case basis. But uh, the nice thing about Microsoft Word templates is they can actually run conditional formulas, little if statements that will check a condition to make sure it's true or meets certain criteria and will display something underneath that case. So if there's a field in Salesforce that identifies if an account is part of the one-to-one -one model or, or not, um, you could use that as almost criteria to drive whether or not that account name is actually included in your label. Um, it would be something interesting to look at, and if you're actually facing that uh, particular circumstance, definitely encourage you to give our support team a buzz to take a look, um, but it does sound possible.
Okay. And another question, can you use Conga Mail Merge to send mass emails? Yeah, great question. Conga Mail Merge, um, it cannot send emails. So what it's geared to do is do larger batch processes. Um, you can run it to about a thousand letters at a time. Um, but it's simple in the sense that it won't do the emailing as well. We do offer a paid add-on product for Conga Composer. Uh, and it's called Conga Conductor, and it's a more powerful batch processing tool that is capable of doing batch emails. You could do up to 500 emails, distinct emails, in a batch, all in one go with Conga Conductor. And doesn't Conga Conductor also let you schedule those uh, yes. merges as well? Great point, Ashley. That's another huge feature about Conductor is that um, not only can you do those batch emails, but you could set them to go up on a schedule. Um, those schedules can be very granular. You could have multiple schedules running. So it's a very automated way to handle those batch, batch routines. Okay. Could you briefly describe what the pricing is like around Conga Conductor? Sure. So with Conga Composer, it's just license-based. If you have a license, you have all-you-can-eat access to what the tool can do. Conga Conductor, because it's more focused on transactions, we bill it transactionally. Uh, we call each transaction a service event. And for example, if you had a, a routine that ran 500 emails in a single batch, um, that would constitute 500 service events. So it's a lot like a cell phone minutes plan. That's probably the best analogy I could give, um, is that you would pay for the number of service events for a year that you would anticipate using and chip away at your annual total. Those service events, it's also worth noting that they're very cheap per transaction, of course. Um, they start off at nine cents each and uh, progressively get cheaper if your volume is higher. Okay, and I think we can move on. Excellent. So moving on from mail merge, um, we're gonna take a look at that free add-on that we mentioned called quick merge. And that's another tab up here in Salesforce. So if we take a look at this quick merge links right here, we already have one in the system called donation summary acknowledgements and it's exactly what we did before but if we go to this quick merge record a lot of what we selected on the fly in that seven step wizard can be predefined so if you're doing something uh, very similar maybe on a monthly basis you're generating the same monthly uh, letters you could hard code all of that into a quick merge link and simply press a launch button to get you right to the uh, the very last step in the process step seven so we'll break down a little bit about what's on this quick merge record because it's obviously been pre-populated. We gave it a name just to give it some context for what it's supposed to do. The link type is mass merge, meaning that this is going to run a conga mail merge routine. That's what the mass merge part is referring to. Down here in the settings, we've specified a document template ID that we wanted to use. We've also told it that we want to bypass the wizard, which means that we will get right to step seven instead of being prompted with all those steps to select our data and templates. And we've also predefined the report that we're using here. So that's exactly the same report as before and exactly the same template that was stored in Salesforce. If we take a look, a quick look at the Conga template manager here, what that ID is really referring to is this Conga template that's been stored up here in Salesforce and it's the record ID that we're referring to. So it's 15 characters, fairly long, but it ends in capital HR here. And we can see that's the template ID we're referring to right here as well. Same thing is true about the report. If we went and took a quick look at that report, we can see it's exactly the same one we did before, just all the posted opportunities so far this year. Even further, we've uh, defaulted that we want it to be a PDF. Um, we're not forcing that, though, so a user could change that once they get to step seven. Um, but right now, it's defaulted to be that type of output format. And we've actually also predefined our activity logging settings as well. So activity logging is automatic. That's actually a feature you get with Quick Merge that you don't get with Mail Merge is the ability to click just the letters button to download them. And it would also log your activity simultaneously, saving some time. We're going to actually do a follow-up task when we run this one. So just a little bit of uh, description here. The activity subject is going to be to ensure that the donation letter actually made out the door. We're still going to save the body of the letter in that follow-up task but we're going to give someone three days in the future to follow up about that. There'll be a due date imposed for three days in the future when we run this. So quite a lot predefined here, but all of that information allows us to just simply click this little launch button right up here. And clicking this launch button will take us to a very familiar page that we just saw, step seven of the mail merge wizard. So here we are. It looks very similar to what we saw before, but some of those things that we predefined are evident on this page. 
You can see the Adobe Acrobat PDF one has been defaulted. We didn't force it though, so we could change it back if we wanted to. Automatic logging is enabled, meaning that once we generate letters right here, it's also going to simultaneously log these activities. We're going to include the body of the letter, this is the subject for the follow-up task, and it's going to be due in three days on the 20th. So from here, we, I, I broke down what's on this page, but I actually haven't changed anything. It's all been predefined by Quick Merge. So if I simply click Letters Documents, what we should expect to see is a very similar output as before, exactly the same for all of those seven accounts. Might need a little hold music for this. It's thinking extra hard. There we go. Excellent. So in PDF format this time, we have the exact same letters. I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see them. So there's the one donation, there's the one donation for the DeMarco family here. And then if we go all the way down to the bottom, there was our one with multiple donations, the same thing. Excellent. So now, if we close out of this output file, it's just in PDF form, that's the real only difference. Let's go take a look at those activities that we logged as well as part of this quick merge process. So we close out of here, and we go back to one of those accounts. We're going to see that there's actually a follow-up task logged instead of the activity history. So right now, we have a follow-up ensuring that the donation letter has been mailed, the due dates in the future, and the exact same, um, or I'm sorry, there are sort of two elements to this. That's the follow-up task, but in the activity history down here, we've also logged that, and we should have the body of the letter there as well. So this is the new activity that we created, and this is where we logged the body of the letter, and then the follow-up is just simply to remind someone that they need to attend to it in a couple of days. So the last thing I really want to highlight is just a little bit more about the Conga Template Manager and how those templates are uploaded and stored. We breezed over it because this one was already included in here, but if we wanted to create a brand new template, all we would do is simply create a record, give it a name, maybe we'll call this Robert's Acknowledgement Letter, something like that just to be different. All we would have to do here is save it. Every other feature on here is, is optional, and then we would simply attach a file from our computer. So the one that we were just working on, I believe it's in our Webinar Templates folder, and we could select this one right here that we were just working on previously. Once you attach that file and then press Done, you effectively have a complete Conga template that's ready to use, ready to be referenced with its ID right here, and is pretty much in exactly the same state as the one that we used for our demo example before. So on that, that concludes what we wanted to highlight in terms of Quick Merge, um, but I'd love to open it up for some questions specific to that part of the tool that we just went through. Okay, and we do have a number of questions, Robert. I'll go ahead and get started. Sure. Um, the first is, uh, so I don't see Conga Quick Merge installed in my org. How do I get Quick Merge? Yeah, great question. Um, while we have the screen here, I can actually show you exactly on our website where you would go ahead to download that. So after our recent rebranding, we will go to congamerge.com. And from the support tab over here, there's a little sub-tab that says installations. And you can see in the free products and add-ons, Quick Merge is right here. There is a different version for professional and enterprise, but as I understand it, the vast majority of nonprofit starter packs are the enterprise edition, so this is likely the version you'll want to download. Clicking this Get It Now button right here will launch the install process, and you would install the package just like any other. Okay. Uh, the next question is, can I put a quick merge button on another object, such as an opportunity? Very interesting question. Um, to be... Uh, to be honest, I would probably lean towards using just a simple Conga Composer button if you're going to put something on an object. Um, Conga Quick Merge, it was designed by our developers to be essentially out of the box used for Conga Mail Merge. Um, it relies on a report and it relies on a template and it actually references all those fields that you see on one of those Conga Quick Merge records. So, although it's technically possible, um, I wouldn't advise recreating this whole custom object um, or the way that it interacts with all these fields here to gather information about what it's supposed to do on another object. Technically possible, but I would very, very much recommend the use of just a simple composer button on another object like an opportunity. Okay. 
Um, another question, this is more specifically about uh, report, it looks like. If a report is predefined, but the date has changed prior to the quick merge launch, does that date still hold? Yes. So whatever data is on the report at the point where you press the launch button right here is what will be actually included in your merge routine. So a very common um, use of reports, and a very smart one to be honest, is to use dynamic date ranges, for example. So maybe last month, or this month, or this current, this fiscal year, or something like that. If you employ those dynamic filters, no one necessarily has to change the report because the data will change on its own based on the filters. And whenever you run Conga Mail Merge, we'll use the most live, up-to-date data that that report has provided. Okay. Uh, one other question is, do you have any sample templates available to help us get started? Yes, we do. Um, and actually, I believe they're stored in our knowledge base, correct? Yes, they are. If you go to the knowledge base and search for the term template library, you will be brought to an article that's a collection of sample templates of a variety of different types. So right here, if we do that, it's a rather large screen. But our Conga Starter Template Library right here, there are quite a few different ones. Some of them are specific for these thank you letters as well, which can be very helpful. But there's a pretty wide variety of different templates that you could use based on different objects as well. So contact templates, opportunity templates. And these are definitely a great way to get started uh, with a basic template. OK, great. Uh, let's see. Um, another question is, is there a basic introduction to Conga Mail Merge that's available? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, actually, but in our Quick Start library right down here, we actually have a couple of Quick Start guides, which include videos as well. So there's a PDF document which walks you through it with instructions, but it also has an accompanying video which will um, be a little bit more descriptive. So creating a simple mailing um, with Mail Merge here, nonprofit non specific. There's some instructional videos and documents here. And then also ones that are not nonprofit specific, but for Conga Mail Merge as well. Um, videos as well as the accompanying documents. OK, great. And that looks to be all of the questions that we have at this point. Excellent. All right. So why don't you bring us back to PowerPoint, Robert, and I will take us through our next steps. Okay, so first, I wanted to thank everyone for attending and to reiterate that you'll be receiving a follow-up email and it will include links to the agenda, a copy of this recording, and also FAQs so you can see the questions that were asked both in this session and the previous session and see what those answers. In addition to that, if you're impatient, you can also just go to our knowledge base and search for the term archive and that information should probably be available uh, sometime early tomorrow. I also wanted to point out some of the resources that are available to help you expand your Conga expertise. So as we've seen, we do have the Conga Knowledge Base, and it includes about 600 articles for a variety of topics that will help you get going with Conga. You can get to that by going to the URL knowledge.appextremes.com, or as you saw Robert do, you can go to our support page and simply do a search from there. We also have a webinar archive. So we've been doing a series of webinars, and in the webinar archive, you have a copy of the URL, excuse me, a copy of the video recording, a copy of the FAQs, and a copy of the agenda for each of the webinars that we have done up to this point. So you can go there and review things that we've already gone over. We also have the quick start tutorials, which Robert just showed you, and the sample templates, which Robert showed you as well, which once again, you search for template library in the knowledge base, and that will take you to those sample templates. We also have a YouTube channel, and it's at www.youtube.com slash congamerge or slash appextremes. We're in the process of rebranding that. And that includes about 25 videos of a variety of types. Some of them are technical demonstrations. Some of them are more marketing in nature. But you can learn more by going to our YouTube channel. And then we have our documentation. Our online documentation includes a full set of PDFs of all of our documentation. If you go to congamerge.com slash support, and select the documentation tab that will take you to those copies of our documentation. And I don't have it listed here, but of course you can always contact our world-class support team, of which Robert, excuse me, of which Robert is part. And to get to that, you can simply send an email to support at congamerge.com, and you can get in contact with our team there. Uh, beyond that, I just wanted to thank everyone for attending. As always, please be sure to let us know what you think. We appreciate the input. And everyone have a great day. Thanks a lot for coming.